God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, my King. You are God and you are good. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my King. Thank you, my King. Hallelujah. Well, folks, what we're going to attempt to do this morning before we make ourselves seated is we're going to attempt to greet one another, giving that space, maybe some air high fives, some air hugs. That'll work. And then make yourself comfortable. And do me a favor. Don't take too long because we got a lot going on. I've already got people waving at me. You who are at home, I'm waving at you too. God bless you. Go for it. Take a few minutes or take, no, uh, take one minute. Take one minute. There we go. Take one minute. All right. Thank you, Lord. They come back up? Okay. Yummy. I got my man. I like your mask. I can't get everybody, and as everybody's making themselves comfortable and loving on each other, I want to take a quick second to greet you who are at home. You guys have been such a blessing. I, I pay attention to who's, who's logging on and watching and joining in, and it's, a, it's an amazing blessing. I do want to apologize to you because I just found out that our internet went down for two minutes, and uh, it's back up, so hopefully you know that, and um, amen. All right, so let me make sure that I'm with you there. There we go. All right, let's make ourselves comfortable if we can. We got a lot to do in a short period of time. We want to make sure our service is awesome. I can't help it, though. You guys know I love this part. I love the part where God's people are loving each other. Amen. Beautiful. Does anybody got an amen for the Lord this morning? Amen. All right. Yes. Our God is good. Thank you, Jesus. Well, all right, so this morning I want to just go ahead and take the time to, to get a few quick announcements going. Uh, just because of the message that God has put on my heart to preach, I want to make sure that we have the time that's needed to get this message out. And uh, so I want to jump right in, and I'm gonna, I want to let you know about some things. Uh, keep your eye on our Facebook uh, page for announcements. You who, are, you, you who are here, you who are here. You who are here, um, and no, I just want you to, to know that you can ask, you can reach out, but you can still go on our Facebook page to get that information. So I want to just highlight a couple things. We got a young adults ministry coming up. You young adults, you, 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 you got to get yourself ready for that. It's going to be a great time together. It's going to be done well with your, uh, your safety in mind, and it's going to be beautiful. So look into that a little bit. Also, I want to remind you of just uh, the small groups. We have what we normally have is home fellowship groups, but during this time we call them Zoom fellowship groups. So jump in and be a part of one. Uh, and uh, we have our daytime fellowship, which is special. That's a Tuesday morning meal right here at the church. The only one problem is everybody knows about it is the heat is ridiculous. Right? 111 yesterday at my house. <laughs> I was like, I'm in Arizona or Nevada. I'm in some desert. I know California is considered a desert, right? A valley. All I know is it was almost Death Valley. So, yeah, let's keep ourselves safe, not just from, you know, any sicknesses that might be flying around, but also keep yourself safe from uh, heat stroke and heat exhaustion. We want to make sure we're taking you know, your, your, your best when you're, at, when you're at your best, and you're a blessing when you're at your best. So take care of yourself, folks. Uh, I think God wants that too, so amen. Okay, so a couple of things, uh, a couple of other things. I want to mention something that's really, really important. Uh, I'm not going to do any more announcements as far as what our events are, that are, are coming. We have some great things coming up uh, here at the church. The big announcement I want to make this morning, uh, I actually have two of them, but 
uh, one big announcement we've already started is our unity celebration that's coming up at the end of this month. It's Friday the 25th. It will be, uh, uh, it'll be Praise Chapel. Uh, so basically PCF Montebello and its churches, which would mean Hacienda Heights, East Los Angeles. We are also opening it up to our friend churches everywhere. Anyone who wants to come, we're going to be in the out, the great outdoors in our Hacienda Heights facility. Uh, they have an amazing outdoor set up, a basketball court, beautiful with a big field and everything. There's so much room that we could space everybody out 20 feet and it, we would not fill the place. It is so good and it's going to be a great time. I want to just promote that. Uh, make plans to be there. Somebody asked me, well, who are you inviting? Everyone. Are you, are, are you inviting kids? If, if parents want to bring them, bring them. Are we having kids ministry? No, we're actually going to have, the, it's outdoors, so we're going to be sitting together as families, uh, uh, spaced out properly, but we want the children who are allowed to come, the kids who, who are brought uh, to sit with families, and, and don't worry, it'll work out beautifully. There's, uh, you know we love kids, we want, our, want the kids, so we are inviting them, we're inviting all the families. So I just want to put that in your ear, it's a couple of weeks away, but before you know it, it's going to be here. And, you know, a lot of people go through that, well, I forgot, or I'm just going to watch it online. By the way, somebody did ask, will it be live stream? Yes, it will. And we're going to make sure that we broadcast that as, as far as we can. We're going to broadcast it on our YouTube channel, on our Facebook page. We're going to broadcast it, broadcast it on our Hacienda Heights YouTube channel as well. So we're just going to spread it out, and it's going to be a great time. So that's what you want to know. Be ready for it. Invite someone. Don't be afraid to invite someone. What about this? What about that? I'm going to say this w one more time. I keep saying that, but I keep saying it every service. I have to. If you can go to the market, if you can go to the store, if you can go get gas, if you can go take care of your responsibilities, if you can go to Home Depot and Lowe's, then you can go to church. Amen. Amen. And so the next time I see a believer pass by some believer in Home Depot or Lowe's or Costco or any of those other places, and they're trying to tell me, oh, I haven't been in church because of COVID. I'm just going to smile and go, okay. But you're here where there's a thousand people in the store. And I've been, so I know. Anyway, I don't mean to be mean about it. I'm just saying I'm tired of the enemy's lies, and I will expose them. Yes, we have something to care over. Care over it. Take care of your families. Do your part. But if you have found yourself taking care of everything else, hanging out, you know, some people can't wait, and can't wait to be in line at Disneyland. They can't wait for all these things, and they're ready to go. Great. But, you know, people are standing in line everywhere. You can come to church. That's it. That's all I'm going to say. So be ready for this unity celebration. Last thing I'll mention about it is the theme is each one reach one. That's our theme. Each one reach one. So maybe that's a good clue to bring someone with you, right? Okay. I'm going to talk to you at home because I didn't hear any amens here. Hi, guys. I'm just wondering, did you guys happen to hear that? I can't see through the camera, but I'm hoping for one of these. Amen? Amen? All right. So that's, that's the big announcement for today. Everything else, they're all special. All the announcements are special. Uh, but that's big because that's all about uh, in, you know, encouraging the body, strengthening and edifying the body of Christ so that we can be a powerful force in this earth for our King by the power of the Holy Spirit. Bringing Jesus everywhere. Reaching people, right? Yeah? Okay. Back to you guys again, because I'm still waiting for those amens. Come on now. Amen. I want to know you're listening. Okay, so those are the announcements that we have for events and things that are taking place. Uh, before we get into offering time, I do have another announcement, and I'm really blessed by this. Um, it, it's really been through prayer and seeking God and just looking for God's direction and guidance. Um, and, and how many know we always need God's direction and guidance for our life? right? We always need that. And uh, we were, I was just real blessed. I'm not going to uh, carry on. It's just, I'm going to make a long story short. Um, <clears throat> my pastors, Pastor Ray, Sister Gloria, myself, Sister Brenda, uh, we, we were all in agreement and in prayer over 
uh, something that has taken place and is official. Um, my brother, Bobby Bohorkas, who is here with us today, uh, many of you who've been at Bowen Park, you've seen my brother, right? Everybody see him right there? You guys can't see him, but he's right there. Um, you know, we know, we've known, I believe you were at Bowen Park for 27 years? 27 years. So we've been in fellowships together. We've done youth ministry to together. We've done conferences together. We've done outreaches together. We've fed the homeless together. We've reached out in every way possible together over 27 years of ministry. Uh, we, uh, myself and Brother Bob, Sister Brenda, we've, we've partnered in ministry in small groups all the way up to big stuff. So it's just a real blessing when, when God does something and, and it's a God thing. Again, I, I say to you, Pastor Ray, Sister Gloria, myself, and Sister Brenda, we're all in agreement uh, over this change. So uh, the change is this. Uh, officially, starting this morning, uh, Brother Bobby will be a part of Montebello, uh, PCF Montebello. Amen. So we welcome him. Amen. And we, we, we thank God, first and foremost. We thank our pastors, Pastor Ray and Sister Gloria, because they're sensitive to the Lord and, and recognize when, it's, uh, when God's moving and doing something special. Uh, I thank my, my wife, Sister Brenda, also for, for praying over this. Brother Bobby, for just wanting to do what God wants him to do. We are, we are connected as a fellowship, and we're still together, and he's uh, family in Ballin Park forever. It's just the way that is. But I thank God that God can, do, God can move. And it can be a special and powerful time. So the last thing I'll say to Montebello and you who are at home that weren't able to be here to see, but you're hearing this announcement, make sure to welcome him. Make sure to make him feel welcome. You know what I mean? Uh, if, he walks, if he starts walking around here with a cara de chancla, you know, a sad face, I'm going to be looking around. Who's been messing with him, man? Who hasn't, who hasn't loved him and welcomed him in? You know what I mean? We want to make sure everyone who comes into this door, whether they're veterans in the kingdom or brand new first-timers, they need to know they're loved by the family of God. Can I get a good amen for that? Amen. I felt that one through the camera on that one. All right. So those are the announcements. Uh, one more big welcome. Brother Bobby, we love you. We welcome you. Amen. <laughs> I hear a little kid saying more bigger amens, right? <laughs> That's Amy right there, all right. Future worship leader, okay. Man, you never know. It's possible. I remember we might have said that when Irene was five. Might have. All right, so this morning, what we're going to be doing during our offering time is uh, we're, I'm just going to share with you the importance, and I'm going to go ahead and welcome the team back up. In our near future, we're going to be changing the way we do offering, okay? I want to change the position in the service of where offering time is. I want to get to the point where offering is at the end of the service, where we're not taking 10, 15, 20 minutes to do an offering sermon within a, within a service. What I really just believe with all my heart is that the people of God, and you guys can come on up when you're ready, that's fine. Um, what I just believe with all my heart is, is believers, you're already servants of God. You already love the Lord. You know the Lord. You know what to do. You know how to give. You learn that in your personal study. We preach on it sometimes. You, we do share once in a while how important it is to give to the Lord. So I want to make an adjustment so that our, our services are really focused on, you know, pray, you know, all of it, including offering, but it's just placed in a way where we can really get the word. And when this restriction lifts, man, the second it lifts, the second it lifts, I'm going to be dancing for joy because these altars are going to open up. And man, I can't wait to dive to get there, right? How many of you know the altars are, spe it's a special place, amen? Right now the whole sanctuary is the altar, yeah. But... There's something about that altar, and so we want to have time, more time for those things. So I, I just want to tell you that, that that is coming in the near future. This morning, I need to share a need with you, uh, a simple need. Uh, I just trust God that God is our provider. I trust that God uses his people. I trust that God, his word teaches us to give, and as we obey him, every need is met. And this is why I don't really want to give offering sermons and all of that uh, during service time. We'll preach on it. We'll teach on it. We'll share what God's Word says in small groups and uh, even over the pulpit uh, with whole messages, but, but not every service. The need I want to share with you today is this. Um, it, God's using His church, His churches all over the world, to preach the gospel. We're in the end times. 
We are in the end times. People need the Lord. And then when they hear the Lord, they need to come to the local churches where they can come and, and learn to, to love the Lord, learn how to serve God, learn to get into his word, learn to, to fellowship, and, and all the things that make a, a believer healthy and strong and anointed in God. Okay, so when, when the church is financially struggling, it jeopardizes that ministry, the, the whole purpose of why a local church is established. And so I share with you today that, uh, you know, our church has been struggling for some time ever since COVID. God has met every need every month. We've been paid every bill every month, and it's been a blessing to watch the miracles happen. Uh, I'm thankful for those miracles. We are here again needing prayer, needing a miracle. Now, I share this with you because I believe, I, I, don't, I don't know what you do. That's between you and God. I will say this, though. I believe that you'll pray. I believe you believe in our local church. You believe in what God is doing. And so I share the need because it is a real need. It is a, it's a bigger need than normal. And so those of you at home too, I want to just encourage, uh, you know, sometimes people because they're at home, maybe they feel like I can't. Once I get back, you know, six months or whatever restriction, then I'll start giving. That's not how it works. We need, the, we need people to be faithful. We need to give. So that's all I'm going to say. Very simple. And I'm going to smile because my, my provider has and always will be the Lord Jesus. Amen. He will always be the provider, and he will always work through us and in spite of us. Yes. So, folks, let's be who we are. Let's trust God because of who he is, and let's see this uh, blessing come to pass. Amen? Amen. Uh, and with that, let's pray. Uh, ushers, come on up quickly. Father, in Jesus' precious name, we love you. We thank you. We know you are our King, our God, our provider, healer, Savior. We praise you because we know this is your church. The local churches you have established in this world and on this earth belong to you. Where your truth is preached, where your presence is felt, where lives are changed, my God. Lord, where people come for, can come in from out of the darkness into your marvelous light. Come out of the deception into the truth of God. Father, we believe in your churches and we ask you, Father, to make every way and provide for Montebello Praise Chapel, Lord God, and uh, all the churches around that are struggling. And Father, we pray you'd bless the family of God. And Lord, I pray for conviction today, Lord. Convict those who have somehow, maybe through the strategy of the enemy, or even convinced themselves that they don't need to trust you in giving. Lord, I pray that you would bring that truth so that we, your people, can continue to obey you in this way. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the blessing. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen and amen. Now, before you guys take off, you guys know what to do, right? Uh, we're, we're, it's, it's, we're dropping offering. We're not, we're not grabbing the basket. We're not touching it, right? We're playing basketball, slam dunks, okay? Don't try to shoot it from the third row, okay? Just everybody slam dunk. You guys ready? Let's do it. Amen. Worship our King. He called it his power and his feet. He has done great things. See what the Savior is done. You see how his love overcomes. He has done great things. He has a great place. Oh, him of heaven, you conquer the grave. You free, you free, got to break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and delight. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, and they lift it high. Oh, God, you have some great hero. Oh, him of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive, break every chain. Oh, God, you have some great things. We dance in your freedom. Again to life, oh Jesus, I save you. They lifted high, oh God, 
Appreciate you. Amen. Yes, thank you. All right. So is anybody ready to get in the word? Amen. Amen. That was pretty good. I wish I could hear you guys at home. <laughs> See, even my little ones are liking. Uh, you know I'm teasing, guys. You know I'm not I'm not really all mad at you because you won't amen. No, I'm just kidding. Do I, I oh okay, so I almost forgot. If you are part of Set Apart Youth, you, you, are, you are released to go. Amen. We apologize that we missed your, 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 th- your gathering last week. We're doing them on Sunday mornings right now, so our Set Apart Youth can have some time together. Amen. So go for it. Yeah, go all the way. There you go. Very cool. Thank you, Josiah, for reminding me. I would have just forgotten again. I'm so sorry. We love our kids, man. We love our teenagers. We love our youth, and we need them to... Uh, since all the teenagers are gone, real quick, I, I need to tell you guys, we need them to want to come to church. And you know how teens are. You know how they are. They, they feel like, man, I'm being drugged to church. <laughs> I got to go because my parents are making me. Well, we want to pray for our youth ministry. Even if they, even if they are sort of being drugged. To <laughs> even if you have to get them here, you know, like that, and they don't want to at first. Trust me when I tell you, Every young adult in our church that's in ministry today at one time felt this way, and God got a hold of their heart. The one I like to use the most is Kevin, <laughs> you know, the, the guitar player. He's not right here right now, so good, I can see him. He's going to probably see it. I remember one day, me and Sister Brenda were walking around in the church. It was not in this building. And he was sitting in a corner. He was, li- he was like five. I don't know. He was a tiny guy. He might have been five. I don't remember how old he was when he got here, but he was really young. He's just a kid. He wasn't even a youth yet. He was sitting there, and just Brenda goes, hi, you know, uh, how are you? He's just looking. She goes, uh, I, you don't look very happy. Aren't you happy to be here? No, I don't want to be here. <laughs> My parents made me come. And he was a little dude, and I was like, wow. But see, today he's, one of, he's our assistant Uh, children's ministry director he's on the worship team and he helps in all kinds of ways see parents we have to know this we need to invest in our kids we need to pray for them we need to uh, set up events for them we need to get them in church and even if they don't like it and they're like Kevin and they don't want to be here I'm wondering does Kevin want to be here now (laughs) yeah I believe he does okay So you get the point, though. So even you who are at home, maybe your teenager sitting next to you. Sorry about that. But we need them to know they need to be in church so that we can reach them, right? And so really so God can reach them and that we can do what we need to do. It starts when they're little guys in Praise Kids Ministry. It really does. Okay, man, I'm excited. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate you opening that up for me because, you know, I got to move this morning. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the living word of God and the presence of the Lord. Thank you. Lord, I know I, I, I'm just a, your messenger. It is your message. It is the power of the Holy Spirit bringing the message to our hearts and opening our understanding so that we can receive it. That is what brings us to change. And so, Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that that's exactly what would happen. Every person who is watching, connecting, Every person who is in the house of God would receive the living word of God today. And we pray this for your glory, Lord, so lives can be changed. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, our, our ushers brought a, a, an announcement to me, and I just wanted to re- remind everybody. I'm going to remind everybody for a couple of services, just so we remember, to, you know, to put your phones on mute. Uh, and, and such so that because you know we're, I could be preaching and we're getting a really powerful point and all of a sudden somebody's ice cream man truck ringtone goes off right in the middle of the service you know or Star Wars dun, 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 I'm like oh my goodness you know what I mean? right in the middle of a so you know let's do that let's make sure to put it on mute I realize that there are emergencies but let's do that 
All right, so I'm excited to get into God's Word, and I hope you are as well. We're going to be in a couple of passages today, and um, I just want to uh, get you ready for this. Uh, our main passage of Scripture this morning is going to be in Colossians, in chapter, uh, uh, actually in chapter 3. Uh, we're, but we're going to be opening up, opening up with two passages of Scripture, and uh, we'll go to them right now. Before we go there, if you want to get ready by going to 2 Timothy chapter 4, and then if you're one of those who has a couple ribbons on your Bible, or you know you got a little piece of paper or something, you can also go to 2 Peter chapter 3, and, and we'll park it right there for a minute. All right, so what I want to share with you this morning, and the title of our message this morning is, Let No One Cheat You of Your Reward. Let no one cheat you of your reward. Do not be robbed. Do not be cheated out. Do not be burglarized or deceived into, into losing your reward. Now, the title is a direct quote out of Colossians. It's, it's actually found, uh, it we'll probably won't even read that verse, but it's found in Colossians chapter 2. And the Bible tells us, um, verse 18 says, let no one cheat you of your reward. It's a direct quote from Scripture. So just know, even the title today is an absolute commandment of the Lord. Don't let anybody cheat you. And we're going to talk about that today, and you'll see how it comes full circle, and how you and I can prevent the enemy, the lies of the enemy, the strategy of the enemy from robbing us of what God has intended for us to, to live and to experience and to enjoy. How many of you want all that God has for you? Amen. Amen. Yes, I know you want all. I know you're, if you're watching and you've been staying on with us this long, I know you want it. So that's exactly what we want to do. We want to <clears throat> hear what God's Word says so that we don't allow anything or anyone be used of the enemy to cheat us from the reward that God has and all that God has for us. I'm not just talking about blessings, by the way. I'm not just talking about monetary, temporary blessings. I'm talking about all things to enjoy. God has so much more than just the temporary surface stuff. There's things so much more valuable than any of those things that you and I can have in the Lord that are priceless on this earth. They were paid for by our king. And so that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about all the things God has for us to enjoy. Amen. So I want to share these thoughts with you. I believe we are in the end times. I've, I say that often and I just mean it. I, I mean it with all my heart. I believe we're in the end times. I believe that the evidence is everywhere. And I also believe that uh, the deceptions of the enemy are running rampant and and Things are happening uh, that the Bible says would happen. Things are happening that the Bible says would happen. And the thing that I want to uh, point out to you in the first opening verse is to sort of uh, lay a foundation for what we're actually going to talk about. I want, I want you to read with me uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4. Okay, so go there real quick with me. And, and you know, here you've got to have your Bibles. You've got to have them. Can't just show up with your phone Bible. I get in trouble every time I say that. But yeah, no, I respect it. But you know, you can't get a notification on your Bible. Only on your phone Bible. All right, 2 Timothy chapter 4. I'm going to read for you verses 1 through 5. Make a quick comment. Then we're going to go to 2 Peter chapter 3. Listen to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4. Listen to what the Bible says. Paul the Apostle speaking to the young pastor Timothy. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and at his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, sound teaching but according to their own desires. Because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you, be watchful in all things, enduring afflictions, 
do the work of an evangelist fulfill your ministry? So in that passage, the comment I want to make this morning is, we are in a time where it has become very clear that there are many who will not endure sound teaching. Okay, I want to make this very clear. I love, I love the presentation of God's word as it comes through preaching, proclamation, excited uh, proclaiming and preaching. I love the, the, the word of God being presented to us when it's, when it's broken down verse by verse and, and explained and discussed and, and, and taught to us. I, personally, for me, I love the word of God any way it could come. It could come in a song. It could come in worship. It could come in preaching. It could come in teaching. Uh, Whatever the style is, I don't care about the style. What I care about is the content of what's being spoken. And so the Bible tells us that in the end times, there will be many who cannot, will not endure sound messages. What is a sound message? Anything you find in Scripture, the truth of God being taught to us, explained to us, uh, preached to us, proclaimed to us, so that we hear these words and we apply them to our life in Christ, we live them out, and our relationship with God grows beautifully because of it. It is the sound teaching of God's Word. It is the sound message that comes from God's Word that the Bible's talking about. In the end times, people won't endure that. Won't be able to endure that. And I say it more like they are not willing to. They're not willing to endure. Now, uh, before we go to the Second Peter chapter 3, I want to point out to you just uh, one point of what I mean by this. As believers, we should be able to hear anything that comes from the Bible. Anything. We should be able to hear something that hurts you in your heart, right? But, but causes you to grow. We should be able to hear that when the word tells us, you know, you really need to stop hurting your own life by that sin you're doing. We should be able to hear that and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for loving me so much that you're willing to correct me and you're willing to set me on a right path. We should be able to hear when God's word says to us, you know, that thing in your life that you won't let go of that is just, just killing your passion for the Lord. You, it's time to let it go. We need to be able to hear that. And I promise you, that stuff's in Scripture all over the place. Everywhere. Okay? And it's all about God's love for us, our relationship with Him, and the things that hinder that. He, he teaches us how we ought to live. And we should be able to hear it. But what I come to find in the days we live in, people want to hear what they want to hear. You know, if you want to preach on, say, judgment, for example... I'm going to say that word again because if you notice over this pulpit, that word isn't coming out a lot. I don't usually get into the judgment of God. I figure there's so many judges in the church. Oh, wait, wait. Let me back up on that one. I'm sorry. I did. That came out a little bit different than I, what I meant. But you know what I'm talking about. There's sometimes people just judge each other so harshly that, man, you know, you just feel so judged that you can't take it when the judgment of God comes. We need to love one another. We need to let, let the judge be the judge. Amen. Come on now, amen. Yeah, that's worth that. Think about it. We need to let the judge be the judge. We need to be the brothers and the sisters who love on each other. And that doesn't mean we need to turn a blind eye when, when it's time to help someone learn some truth. But folks, we need to do it with gentleness and respect. We need to do it with the kind of love that Jesus gave to his disciples. Remember, who he treated really aggressively were the Pharisees. But the disciples, yeah, he let them know. He taught them. He told them what they... Remember when he told Peter, get, you know, get the, behind me, Satan? But how many, how many times did you hear that? You know, you, you heard it once, and you've heard other times when Jesus dealt with people. But it, for the majority, it was always a, a, a nurturing, you know, come, come to me. Let me teach you. Let me love you. Let me show you. And then I want you to repent. I want you to change because of what I taught you. So when we talk about judgment, for example, we live in a time where people don't want to hear that. Man, I don't want to hear that. Man, I don't need to be put, I'm being put down. You're not being put down when you hear the judgment of God. You're not being uh, belittled or beat up on when you hear the judgment of God in the word of God 
giving us, enlightening our past, showing us the way, showing us what's bad and what's good. It, we're not being beat up, but so many people think like that. Oh, that, all they do is beat me up with their messages. Well, some places you do get that, and I'm not going to lie. There are some places where, uh, you know, leadership needs to grow a, a bit more in the Word so that they can give a healthy balance of the Word of God. But I'm telling you, so many people, uh, their appetite for God's Word is such that they only want the sugar on top. Yeah, man, this pastor's preaching some good word. It's blessing me right now. Oh, 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 he started talking about judgment. Let me change the channel. Hold on. PCF Montebello. Oh, that's good, Pastor Tony. He's kind of weird, but yeah, it's good. Oh, he said judgment. No, I'm going over here to bless me, church. Let me take you to Second uh, uh, Peter. I, I didn't want to belabor that, but you get it. There's a time that is coming. It's here where people will not endure good, sound, based in the word of God teaching. They won't endure it. They won't have it. We already read what they'll do instead. They'll just collect up things that they want to hear and that's it. Okay, but let me take you to uh, Second Peter. You guys okay? Everybody still with me? All right. If we ever can get to Colossians, oh boy. <laughs> Sorry, but this is what it's got to be. Second Peter chapter 3. I want to read to you from verse 2 through 4. The Bible says, and here's Peter just encouraging through his letter. He says, <clears throat> make sure I got the right chapter here. There we go. All right. He says, that you may know. Now, I'm going to read verse 1. Sorry, Frank. Um, Beloved, I now write to you this second epistle in both of which I stir up your pure minds by the way of reminder. Verse 2, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of, uh, of, the commandment of us, meaning Peter and the other apostles preaching God's word, preaching the words of Jesus that was taught directly to them, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, verse 2. Now listen to verse 3 and 4. Knowing this first that scoffers will come in the last days walking according to their own lusts and saying, where is this promise of his coming? For since, since the fathers fell asleep, in other words, since the, our, our ancestors died, we've been hearing, and I'll, I'll just read it again, for since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. I show you this passage because Peter's telling the, those who are listening, those who are receiving these words, those from the church, the people of God, he's saying, note this first, scoffers will come. And what they'll be scoffing about is, oh yeah, all the people who preach about God and talk about the rapture and talk about Jesus is coming and we better be ready, talk about his judgment and talk about how, how God is coming and we need to get ready. They've been talking about that forever. And as I look around, I don't see any changes. Everything's still happening the way it's always been happening. Maybe it's not real. The Bible tells us in the end times, scoffers will rise and do that sort of thing. And I personally am seeing the evidence of that everywhere. People of God are dropping off, saying, you know, I don't need to be that uh, into it. People who have a religion or form a religion and they believe in Jesus and some other people, you know, they're sort of like, yeah, it's not that serious. Well, the Bible told us that scoffers will rise up and try to take our attention off of the fact that the Lord is coming. Thank you, Alma, for the amen. You back in there in the corner. I appreciate it. Is that Ricardo? Because my glasses are done. Uh, and again, I'll say it again because the Word of God tells us that in the end times, scoffers. Are we scoffers? No. Do we put down the truth of God's word? Do we divert it or, or pervert it? No, we preach it straight, plain, and simple. But there are many who will take it, twist it, with the intentions of taking our, our attention off of this clear fact that the judgment of God is coming. Is anybody listening? See, those who 
usually aren't listening are the ones who are like, yeah, that was a nice sermon, but after church, I'm going to go and do exactly what I've been doing. And I don't even care. You guys seen my new favorite t-shirt. I didn't wear it this morning. But you know what it says now. My favorite t-shirt, Brother Jason made it for me. It says, do you care what God thinks? It's a question. Do you care what God thinks? We need to care. I love that. Every time I wear it, somebody in public, I see their face. They look at it. And I'm like, you like that? <laughs> you have a question? You want to know? I don't mind. All right. So let's get to the passage that I want to give to you. And there, there's not much to share. I mean, there's actually way too much to share. But the main thing we need to hear today, we need to recognize today that the judgment of God is coming. And we don't need to be people. See, people of God who love the Lord and are in the Lord, you don't have to be perfect. How many of you figured that one out? You're never going to have to be perfect because you can't be. There's a, the perfect one. His name is Jesus. His precious blood washes our sins away. He makes it possible for us to be perfect in His sight. His blood cleanses us. Not because we've earned it or deserved it. Not because we are doing something that makes him say, okay, you get a point today. And then we mess up. Okay, I'm taking two points away. God, it's not a merit system, folks. That's not what God is doing. He paid it all. So you and I are saved by the precious blood of Jesus. And not just the, that he died on the cross, by the way. We were fellowshipping at work, uh, uh, and, and Junior and Frank, uh, David and Frank, myself, and we were talking about how Jesus is on the cross for some people. Still on the cross. Oh no, it's not just that Jesus died on the cross, which we thank God for the precious blood of Jesus that washes our sins away. I mean, we have to remember our Lord and Savior not only died on the cross, but He rose from the dead. He, he defeated death, hell, and the grave, and He did it for our life, our life more abundantly, our eternity, our freedom. He proved that He is God. Amen? Think about that. He proved it. He proved it. And so, going to Colossians chapter 3, for those of you who really just like to know what the Bible's about, when you look at chapter 2, you see that Paul the Apostle's writing to the church in Colossae. He's, he's teaching them something because they're struggling. They're playing games. They can't make up their mind. They're going to the old things mixed with the new things. They're, I don't have the time to expound on all of it, but it, it's just, they've just really lost their way with, with what it means to, to live for Christ. And, and so Paul's teaching them that because some of the things that they were doing had more to do with, their, with uh, the, tra the old traditions of, of what they were raised in Judaism. And that's another topic for another time. But I want to bring you to... Uh, where Paul addresses that and he's wanting to help them understand, okay? This is what we call true discipleship. If you didn't get anything else I said, you got to get some of this right now, okay? How many of you say, I'm a disciple? Hey, okay, I want to follow Jesus, right? We don't want to follow what people say about Jesus. We want to follow Jesus. We don't want to just know what somebody's opinion is about Jesus because people have opinions. Oh, he was a good teacher. Oh, he's a rabbi. Oh, he was, he was a son of God. Oh, he was a, uh, uh, an angel that turned into Jesus. People have all kinds of opinions of who Jesus is. But, but uh, uh we don't want to follow somebody's idea of Jesus. We want to follow Jesus. And I've heard people say, well, how could you really know who Jesus really was? How could you really know? Oh, that's actually simple, folks. It's a very simple thing. See this beautiful, beautiful book? Oh, I love this book. Because it tells us who he is, what he wants, what he, his desires for us. You guys remember last service? If you don't remember, go back and watch it. The power to change the world. Remember that? That's the last message on Wednesday. The power to change the world. The Holy Spirit bringing the Word of God into one person and that person receives Christ and their whole life is changed, you better believe their world gets changed. And if you multiply that out and people keep getting saved and changed, saved and changed, then the, the power to change the world begins to spread and it's spreading through you and I. 
It's still God. But I tell you right now, when a, a true changed life is, is demonstrated out there, people can tell the difference. They know where the power's at. So this is just further discipleship, okay? Listen to this. Chapter 3, verse 1. Colossians 3, verse 1. If you were raised... Hold on, i got to stop. Are you guys still listening? Yes. Okay, I want to make sure. Okay, if you start dozing off on me, I've instructed the ushers to get water bottles. <laughs> poke little holes in the top. and I just want to make sure you guys don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss what is being said. said. The living word of God, it's powerful. All right, here we go. If then you were raised with Christ... Seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Verse 2, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. So he starts out by saying, if you are a believer, if you remember and understand and receive that Jesus just, d didn't just die on the cross, he rose from the dead, and you have risen with him, if you are a child of God, born again, then it's time to go back to a place where you remember your, your life, your direction, your motives, your decisions. All that comes from what you set your mind on. And so he tells us, if you are a child of God, raised with Christ, you are a believer, then you're going to need to set your mind on things above. Things above where? In the, in the stars? In the space? No. The Bible says Jesus is sitting on the right hand of the Father. Where he is, where all truth comes from, that's where we set our minds. And that beautiful truth needs to affect what we do and how we live. Hmm? Yeah? Hmm. Ah, I feel that. I feel that, man. I feel conviction even in my heart. Thank you, Lord, for cutting me to the heart. Verse 3, for you died and your life is hid with Christ in God. Anybody ever heard the term born again? You've been born again, right? You, uh, unless a man is, is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Cannot. We're born again. We've died to that old nature. We're dying daily, aren't we? Daily. So he straight out tells us, you died, for you died. Your life is hid in Christ and God. In other words, your life, the only real life you actually have is in Jesus. Before Jesus, you and I were not living. We were just existing. We didn't have true life. We were in darkness. And the enemy's deceptions and influence controlled everything we did, whether you like it or not. It's just true. So now we're in Christ. We're in the light. We're in the truth. And now we're, uh, we have true life. We have real life. And so it goes on to say, verse 4, When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you, will, you also will appear, appear with him in glory. Verse 5, Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth. Now, I realize in the New King James, that sounds a little weird when you first read, put your members to death, like my family members? Uh, my, you know, my, the members of my team? You know, <laughs> you know, I realize that we need some ex explanation, but that's why we needed to get into God's word. Again, listen to what he says. He says, verse 5, Therefore, put to death your members which are on earth. And if you read the next part, it tells you what they are, what those members he's referring to are. He says, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, and covetousness, which is idolatry. What is he talking about when he says, put, put those members to death? He's talking about the places and parts and, 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 and workings in our life that are producing these actions. Where do we get, as believers, where do we get the idea that fornication is okay in the family of God? Remember what we started out with? In the end times, they will not endure sound teaching. There are people today that are saying, oh yeah, you know, it's fine. You can fornicate and God still loves you. You're still going to make it to heaven. You're just going to have a few marks on your, on your record. I'm not going to tell you who's making it to heaven and who's not. All I'm going to tell you is nothing's hidden from Christ. 
And he knows if we're just playing games or if we're faltering, stumbling, and just need to repent. He knows the difference, folks. Okay? So, fornication, uncleanness, passions, evil desires. The one I want to focus on for a couple of minutes or just a minute is a covetousness, which is idolatry. Covetousness. You know what idolatry simply is? Idolatry is uh, worship of an idol. Covetousness is being described, or idolatry is being described as covetousness. What is covetousness? Because if you want to know what idolatry is in the modern day, then you have to define covetousness. A person who covets something that belongs to someone else. I covet that person's car. I covet that person's job. I covet that person's husband. I covet that person's wife. I covet that person's life. I covet that person's house. I covet that person's whatever. I don't like my kids. I wish I could switch them with your kids. What? Somebody said, what? Mm, you'll be surprised how many. Man, if I could. Lord, can I exchange these kids for some other kids? You'll be surprised. So when you think about covetousness, and, God, and Paul's using it as a, a description of idolatry, it fits perfect in the modern day. Because I'm pretty sure that most of you don't have little wooden idols and tiki, tiki idols in your house that you bow down to and you're worshiping. That's your idol. If you do, man, something's really wrong. Really bad. We're, I got to bring you up to the 21st century. But, but again, that doesn't mean there's no such thing as an idol. The Bible's clear on it. You want to see what your idol is? What are you coveting? What are you jealous about? What do you want that you don't have? What is it that you just, you're just never satisfied and you're just always going after? To, to the point where it's got your attention, it's got your direction, it's got your decision, it's got everything that you would, are supposed to give to God, you're giving it to that. Let's go on. I would love to develop that a little bit more, but we don't have time. Let's go to verse 6. Because of these things, the wrath of God. When's the last time you heard the wrath of God sermon? <laughs> oh, not now, not today. Seven ways to be the better you. Right? The top five ways to be blessed with heaven's best. And don't get me wrong, I love all that. I love being blessed. I want to be better. I love all that. But I'm going to tell you right now, we're not going to be better if we aren't walking with God. If we don't get what God is saying to us, the one who knows better, think about it. I think it was David who said, man, I'd rather live on a... Oh, gosh, I'm going to mess that verse up. God forgive me. Something about, you know what? I, I, I'm better with a morsel of bread in... in, in and a child of God than being king's palaces. I know I butchered that scripture. Somebody's going to have to find it and tell me what it, the exact words, but it's so true, that sentiment. I would rather have nothing. When we first started out, what was I doing? Brendan will tell you, I was riding a bicycle everywhere because I just couldn't get a car because the jobs weren't good enough and life wasn't. But you know what? While I was riding a bike, I was smiling. You know why? Because I was once lost. And now I'm found. I was dead in my sin. Now I'm forgiven. I'm a child of God. And I wasn't worried about, oh, is this going to be what I have for the rest of my life, Lord? I'm so unsatisfied. I hate this. I just, oh, this is just so, maybe this isn't even right. Maybe I don't even, this religion stuff isn't for me. No, I was just like, I don't care whatever you got for me next, Lord. I just can't wait to be in your presence doing whatever you want to do. And 30-some years later, we're fine. We're taken care of. And not because we pursue, but because we pursue the Lord. Simple, plain. But if he, does another, he doesn't do another good thing for us on this earth, temporary surface stuff, he's enough. He's good. He's God. All right, I'm going to check, check the time. It's 10.30. Normally, some of you barely be starting, coming to church late. No, I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. Did I say that? Boy, I've been slipping them out today. Sorry. I need a few more minutes to finish this message up. Are you ready for that few more minutes? Can you do it? Okay, because even if you can't do it, you're going to do it. <laughs> Because the judgment starts at the house. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. Sorry, let's keep going. Uh, 
Verse 6, because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. See, here's the thing. This is sound doctrine, loving truth that protects the sons and daughters of God, that teach us how to be blessed, how to be powerful in Christ, how to live free, how to be, impact others with the truth. Uh, you know, the, the sound teaching is all about how, and then it's, it exposes to us something so beautiful that if we do not recognize who we are and live that life, if we do not put to death those members and those things that have got our whole life and attention, then what's going to happen is God's going to, um, are you ready for this? God's going to just overlook it and excuse it. I just, I'm just wanting to make sure you're listening. Is that what we just read? God's going to overlook it and excuse it and you're going to be fine. Hey, God, don't pay attention to the next six months because in the next six months, I got to do a little cheating. I got to cheat on my taxes. I got to, you know, do a little this and that. I'm going to even hold back my tithes too because I don't want to, you know, I got to get this thing. And God, so just the, the, the six-month patch in my life with God, just ignore that, please, God, because I, afterwards I'll get faithful. Lord, I just, just want to be with her right now. I just want to be with him right now. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong church. I'm not even supposed to be talking about this. You know? Um, so God, just overlook this right now. So that when it's time and I'm ready to make a commitment to you, Lord, then start marking it up. Start recording. There ain't no replay button, folks. There's no rewind. That last five minutes we just spent, it's gone. You ain't getting it back. So, God's word tells us point blank, sound teaching, loving, caring, uh, uh, protection of God upon his people. What does he say? Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. You better believe God will judge his people. And it's not just judgment. The word wrath is being used. Does anybody know what wrath means? How many of you don't feel dumb if you don't? Because that's a word that's not used that much. How many of you are not sure what wrath means? You're not sure. See, nobody wants to lift their hand. I know there's got to be some. All right, well, since nobody lifted their hand, I won't, I won't tell you what it means then. Ah, oh, that didn't work either. I was like, oh, I was hoping somebody would lift it. All right, it means the anger of God. What? God gets angry? Not, not my God. My God's a loving, merciful, you know, a candy sugar-coated sugar daddy in heaven God who overlooks all my sins and just, you know, when I do something wrong, they go, he goes, well, one finger. That's it. No, actually, God hates sin so much that he let his son be crucified and put to death to pay for that sin. That's how serious God is about sin. Now, think about this. He loves us so much that he did that so that the sons of disobedience, he said, look, I gave you everything you need. I love you. You're my son. I love you enough to even be upset with what you're doing. Think about that. These, this is for the sons of God, sons and daughters. This is not for some unbeliever out there who don't know what's happening. This is for us, the sons and daughters of disobedience. Now, some would say, oh, he's talking about the Jewish people of the Old Testament. Folks, it's to the letters to the church of Colossae. Whether they're Jews or Gentiles, they don't even matter. They're all born again. They're all children of God. And some of them have become disobedient sons. And God says, look, I love you enough to warn you. If you continue, you're going to experience the wrath that comes after that, and I don't want that for you. I already paid for it on the cross. I want you to be free and blessed. I want you to live life in victory, not in constant uh, judgment under the hand of God. I will confess to you, I know what judgment of God feels like. As a son of God, I've had God's heavy hand on me. 
over my disobedience, and it would hurt, and I would just feel terrible, and I'd, and I'd feel like, man, God, you know, when am I ever going to get this thing right? And God would always be, I gave you everything you need. You can do it. You, you have everything. You can do it. But stubborn me, sometimes I would wait till, you know, here's the pressure, right? And I'd be like, oh, God, I'm so sorry. God, I'm really sorry. <laughs> Oh, God, I'm really sorry. Well, if you're so sorry, then do something so I can take my pressure off of you. I love you too much to leave you like that. If I let you do that, you're going to just walk yourself right into an ugly place where you are robbed and cheated of your reward. Oh, now I know what the, the title's about. Remember, same book. Don't let anybody rob you of your reward. Cheat you out of it. You know who's trying to cheat you out of it? The, the enemy himself. The carnal flesh. Man, I got to hurry up. Let's, just, let's read on. Let's keep going because we got to finish this off. Listen to what it goes on to say. Okay, I'm going to read 6 and 7. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon sons of disobedience in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to be put off, or to put off all these, put off anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. You know what I'm noticing nowadays? What is it with believers are starting to get real comfortable with bad words again? Has anybody noticed? I've been tripping on this. Do people still say trip? I do. I still trip. I've been tripping lately on this. How, you know, bad words are just coming out of people's mouths a lot more comfortably now. And I'm like, I catch it, and I'm like, whoa. You know, bef you know, there was a time when we cared about that. We cared about what God's Word says. Hey, I'm not going to let junk come out of my mouth. I'm going to learn how to speak right. Oh, you don't understand, Pastor. I was a habit for all my life. I just can't stop saying, and excuse me, to hell with them. Yeah. The, the one I cannot stand, the word I cannot stand, and guys, I don't even want to say it because it's going to be on YouTube and Facebook, but this word frickin'. Folks, I'm sorry, but that's just a replacement for another F-bomb. Since we can't say that, we say this. Oh, that, and I don't even want to say it because it sounds so gross. But again, I'm not here judging you. Remember, when the Bible says, because you're children of God, you need to care about filthy language. You need to care about that because your language can help someone or hurt someone. It can actually uplift somebody and show them a changed life. Or it can also do this. It can say, I'm a believer but I get away with everything and so can you. We could be doing the kingdom damage. Sound teaching. All of it. We don't need to be afraid of the judgment of God, the wrath of God to hear about it. Let it cut us. Let it realign us. Let us get back to it. And if you're feeding yourself that's got you talking like that and acting like that and being that way, then cut that. Why? Because it's a church rule? No, because God wants to bless your life and that direction's just gonna keep messing you up. How many of you figured it out yet? Two people, great. How about you guys back at home? Have you figured that I believe you have because you're online, right? You're not watching net, whatever. You're watching us, okay. So, so you, I keep saying we need to end this, right? <laughs> Sorry. Verse... So verse 8 is clear. Put away anger and wrath and malice and blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Don't lie to one another. Don't lie to one another. Man, I'm convicted about that because lately I've been tempted to like, not lie, but like, you know, sort of contour the truth a little. Pastor, what, you? Yeah, I'm admitting it. You know, are you going to love me and help me repent? I admit this. You know, where... Uh, I'm at work, a phone call, customer calls, and, and, you know, where's my material? And there's a temptation, oh, it's on its way. <laughs> it might not be on its way, exactly. In my mind it is, uh-uh. Instead, I'm like, I'm sorry, we'll get at it. When I'm tempted to curve that, now you might say, well, well, what's wrong with that? If you're feeling like that, something's wrong with your, your filter, too. Because maybe you're saying, oh, who's that? Who's that calling? Just tell them I'm in the shower. 
Or you might be, someone's at the door. Oh, no, I don't want to talk to them. No, no, tell them I'm not here. All of a sudden, our filter gets worse and worse. So you, so, you owe somebody some money. Hey, you got that money I need? Oh, no, I, I really don't have it while you're, you're going to go buy something at Best Buy. I'll get them later. So it goes on. Don't lie to one another. Verse 9, do, do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with its deeds, with his deeds. Verse 10, and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Verse 11, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave. I don't have time to explain that because we're out of time. doesn't matter who you are is what it's saying. If you're in Christ, it doesn't matter who you are. We're God's people. We represent him. We live for him. Okay, and I will close with this. I'm going to jump a few verses. Verse 15. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. So in closing, and really I am actually closing, he is saying, you cannot will not have the peace of God ruling in your heart if you are not truly receiving when the truth of God is coming to you and you do nothing about it and you don't put away those members and you don't just be real with God and with yourself. I'm not talking perfection. You know what I'm saying? Then how can the peace of God rule in your heart when a guilty conscience is ruling it? Or when a, uh, you know, maybe a dark heart or a, a heart that's careless. I don't even care. I'm just here because I don't even know if I care about that. How can God's peace rule our hearts when something else is in the ruling chair of our heart? And we've got to stop right there. Can we give the Lord a big hand clap this morning? Come on. Father, we thank you. We give you praise and honor and glory. For you are worthy, my King. You are worthy, Lord. So we, we need to take this from this service. I don't ever want anyone to rob me, cheat me out of my rewards. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to let, I'm not, I don't even want to cheat myself. God has something for me I want what he has, and I want it the way he wants to give it to me, not in my little idea of a way. I don't need to help him. He's got it. I want all God wants for me, and everything that's cheating my life out, or cheating me out of it, it's time for that to die. Do you get that? Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father, thank you. Thank you for the living word of God. Thank you for this everlasting love that is matchless. Cannot, it, it cannot be matched. You love us so much. And you have so much for us. And you want to do so much through us. And you want to bless us. And we admit to you, Lord, that there are times that in, these t in these end days that we let our hearts get cold. We stop taking your word serious. We start picking and choosing what it is we should hear. And we put aside the things that we don't want to hear that are healthy for us. God, forgive us, Lord. We repent of our pride and our selfishness and our unteachableness. We repent of those things, Lord. We repent of the, the, the things that are in our members that are, are sinful, things that are not pleasing to you. We, we admit that we know, we truly know, Lord, that you have given us the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we're, we repent because we haven't walked in that power. We haven't said no when it was time to say no. We haven't, we haven't fed our spirit 
to keep ourselves strong when it was time. And therefore, we struggled, Lord, when the temptation came. We repent, Lord. We want all that you have for us. We want your blessing. We want that greatest blessing of knowing that we're right with you. So thank you for forgiving us. Thank you for speaking to us truth. Thank you for warning us of the wrath of God that comes upon the sons of disobedience. Thank you for that warning, Lord. It's a blessing. It's a real blessing. A warning. Because we know it prevents that final judgment. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for loving us. Now, Father, I pray for all who listened and all who received. I pray that the Holy Spirit would empower them, bring strength to them, bring joy to their life, let the peace of God truly rule their hearts. Lord God, let them have confidence and courage that no matter what they face, you're with them, Lord. And Lord, show them, Lord God, that obedience is beautiful, Lord. It is the life we were meant to live. Obedience to you, Lord, which comes with great reward. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. And everyone who agrees with me in that prayer, say it with me. Amen and amen. All right. Thank you, Jesus. I have to dismiss you on this. Don't forget, uh, don't wake up and go to work accidentally tomorrow morning because it's the holiday. <laughs> and don't forget, guys, there's a financial need. If there's ever been a time for the sons and daughters of God to be obedient, it's now. Uh, God bless you guys. I got to let you go. Be blessed today. Shine the light. Each one reach one. Go for it. God bless you. Amen.